Kruger Park is a game reserve in the northeast of South Africa. 100 years old, it is one of the oldest game reserves in the world and one of the largest. It has a land mass bigger than Israel. It is the most popular tourist venue in South Africa. Over one million people visit the park annually, bringing millions of dollars into the country's economy. They come to see the animals of Africa flourishing in this haven. But all is not well in paradise. This elephant is not dead, it's just sleeping. Darted by a cocktail of powerful drugs, this representative of the largest land animal is about to receive a gynecological examination. A team of German and American vets have joined South African specialists in a unique research project. A year ago, 18 cows were darted with an immunocontraceptive vaccine. Here, they're investigating whether or not the vaccine actually worked. We are trying to um, establish the reproductive um, stage of the mm -hmm. elephants and what we are using is ultrasound. The only difference to humans is that we have to examine through the rectum because the skin of the elephant is actually too thick. We have developed a special probe where we can actually extend our arm because otherwise it would be too short. And with that procedure we can establish if an animal is pregnant and also if she is um, sort of in an early pregnancy we can normally we can see the whole fetus and also can determine how old the fetus is. This elephant like eight others in the project is pregnant so the vaccine didn't work and the scientists still have a long way to go to perfect their methods. They are only in the second year of a five-year project but they are confident that the science can be perfected and that the contraception can work. The vets are under pressure the elephants should only be sedated for 20 minutes. There are also external dangers. Rangers keep guard against attacks from other members of the family. Elephants live in social groups and they won't abandon the cow while she's down. But the science does not take place in a vacuum. This research is being done in a volatile environment where passions run deep over the future control of South Africa's elephant population. Our project it has a neutral base. We don't want to interfere with any political decisions, management decisions. We just want to um, do the basic research to be able to give a tool to Parks Board or other um, Parks authorities that they have an alternative to culling. But we want to re really clearly state that it's just an alternative. The final decision always depends on the management themselves. Dr. Anthony Hall Martin is the head of research for South Africa's National Parks Board. Contraception has always been something that uh, scientists have talked about. We know that it's very successful in humans. There's successful contraception in other animal species. And uh, we thought that it was time to look at, at, at the elephant. Not many countries have the capacity or the facilities to do a sophisticated research project such as the one we're doing in Kruger. And we were asked by an international meeting of elephant scientists and elephant experts 
whether the national parks of South Africa would do that, so that at least that information is then available to any country that wants to use a non-lethal way of controlling elephant numbers. Up until two years ago, the park culled its excess elephants, and they're looking to this project to see if they can avoid the need for it in the future. Julian Sturgeon belongs to the Africa Resources Trust, a non-governmental organization that believes that elephants could and should be culled. I suppose one can take the view that there is a scientific necessity for uh, developing new techniques and new methodologies, and I've got no problem with that and perhaps we should be uh, trying to work out elephant contraception methods. But I must say that there is a strong body of opinion in this country, mostly from neighbours of protected areas. For example, all the people living next door to the Kruger National Park who are not interested in, in, in these problems because they feel that, that, that elephants are a resource, elephants have value, and to place constraints, chemical constraints, upon their productivity doesn't make any sense at all um, because they can benefit from uh, the, the culling operation. They can benefit in the sense that they can have access to ivory, uh, hide and meat. The Kruger Park has a stockpile of ivory worth almost 10 million dollars obtained from culled animals or elephants that die naturally. A world ban on the ivory trade means they can't sell it. Dr. Doe Hrobler is head of research projects in the Kruger Park and the expert in animal capture. He has to concoct the drugs for the elephants and he's also a crack shot. The dart only works if it enters the correct muscle in the elephant's rump. During the last cull three years ago, he participated in the killing of 300 elephants and he hated it. But the problem of elephant overpopulation is complex and he's not convinced that the immunocontraception program offers the park a realistic alternative to the cull. We can't say at this stage that that is the answer to the elephant problem in the Kruger National Park because, as you've seen, it involves a hell of a lot of infrastructure, uh, logistics. You know, you've got to put ele every elephant down at this stage. For a big population like the Kruger National Park, where we're already sitting with 9,000 elephants, we've got to contracept 3,000 elephant cows at this moment to maintain that level of 9,000 elephants. So, I, you know, to me, I, if I got a look at that, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's quite a difficult task at this stage. But one sit with realities, and that is that elephants are causing a lot of devastation to, to the habitat. They, they, they really are destructive feeders, and they can change an environment. I mean, this was there was a lot of, you know, even in my time still, there were a lot of bush around this area. And they open it up, you know, they create it to suit their needs. You can actually check it, all the trees in this vicinity, you can see, you can actually check the bark there as well, has been stripped. Tree next to it has been stripped. In the Kruger National Park, we're managing the place for uh, biodiversity, and not just for the elephant, which is... Uh, you know, one of our main objectives, uh, you know, biodiversity is everything and uh, as such it's not an elephant park. So we've got to look at other species as well. You've got to look at birds that nest in, in specific trees, you know, which the elephants also like. So if there's too many elephants, they will take out all those trees and, and you can have problems with fruit bats and things like that that also need good trees for their existence. And one must think about those species as well. While the cull is depressing, the hard fact of the matter is that it does serve a purpose. It solves the population problem and it generates resources, ivory, animal hide and meat.
I personally think that it's a it's 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 a question of of sentiment that people see something like an elephant a magnificent creature and the thought of it being shot by a hunter's bullet or by a or by a, a manager's um, culling operation is 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 immoral that's a lot of people think like that my own view is that that is um, double standards because if people really thought like that then they would have to look at things like um, um, the beef industry the uh, well agriculture in general people slaughter cattle uh, sheep goats pigs uh, in vast numbers every day and in conditions which are considerably less uh, humane than being dispatched by a bullet and they don't make any fuss about that but they make a fuss about elephants now you know to me that's a double standard I don't understand that well I can understand why people pay a lot of attention to elephants because uh, we can associate with an elephant it's a big animal they're very sociable they got very strong family bonds and uh, you know the, the parents or the, the cows do look after their calves and as such, we regard them as very intelligent animals as well. And that's probably why we are associating with these animals. And, uh, you know, a thing like uh, buffalo and, and other animals, people don't really associate with. And therefore, if, if you know, if they get slaughtered or, or, uh, or cult, there's not, not such a big outcry as for elephants, for instance. If you see the whole um, culling issue in an African context, it's a very difficult subject because you have a potential resource here which you can use. You have the, the meat, you've got the tusks, you've got the skin, and it's a potential income which you can put back into conservation, and you also, a part of it, can actually benefit the people living around a park. And I have the feeling that quite often people from overseas, they forget this issue and to forget the people who live around a park and if the parks, if they can't sustain themselves they won't have any future